Hello everyone, my name is Chi Hornick. I am on faculty at the Duke University Medical Center in the divisions of Neonatology and Pediatric Critical Care Medicine, as well as at the Duke Clinical Research Institute. This presentation is entitled, Filtering the Problems, Best Practices in Troubleshooting Total Parental Nutrition Administration. I have two disclosures. I received support for research from the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, and I am on the Scientific Advisory Board for Teletherapeutics. The learning objectives of this presentation are to understand the best practices to filter parental nutrition in intravenous lipid emulsions and to troubleshoot issues with using a filter. I will be highlighting important best practice recommendations for safe and effective filtering of parental nutrition from Aspen's position paper that was published in February 2021 by Worthington and colleagues on behalf of the Aspen Parental Nutrition Safety Committee. Before the parental nutrition is compounded, it is important to know your patient's vascular access, confirm the parental nutrition additives are appropriate, and verify the stability and compatibility of those additives in addition to any medications and therapeutic infusions that the patient is receiving. After the parental nutrition is made, visually inspect the bag or syringe in tubing for evidence of particulate matter or admixture instability, as well as for cracks or leaks in the tubing. Select the 1.2 micron filter size for all parental nutrition regimens. An additional 0.2 micron filter is not required and not recommended for lipid emulsions. For the 2-in-1 parental nutrition, attach the 1.2 micron filter below the Y site where the infusions meet, as shown in this illustration. Set up one fluid at a time to prevent errors. Complete the setup for the parental nutrition admixture before setting up the lipid emulsion. Now it is time to prime the filter. Prime the parental nutrition administration tubing with parental nutrition admixture and stop before the fluid reaches the filter. Next, prime the lipid emulsion administration tubing with the lipid emulsion and push a small volume into the top of the filter. Hold the filter vertically with the air filter up during the priming to allow the ventus side to fill before flowing to the patient side of the filter. If needed, gently tap the side of the filter to remove air bubbles. After you are done priming the lipid emulsion, go back to the parental nutrition admixture and prime the parental nutrition admixture through the filter to the distal end of the tubing to dilute the lipid emulsion that is present in the filter. This will help prevent occlusions. Finally, attach the filter to the patient's vascular access device. This short video demonstration will help you visualize the important step of keeping the filter vertical with the air filter up during the priming process. After priming the lipid emulsion to saturate the top of the filter, complete the priming process by pushing the parental nutrition admixture through the filter and into the tubing that will be attached to the patient. Now that the filter is primed, trace the parental nutrition administration tubing from the pump to the patient and program the pump for the correct rate. Release all clamps and initiate the infusion. Co-administration of medications and parental nutrition should be carefully considered on a case-by-case -case basis. If the patient has multiple vascular access, avoid co-administration of medications with parental nutrition when possible. Repeat or prolong pausing of parental nutrition in lipid emulsions may contribute to occlusions with the filter. For patients with singular vascular access, Medication administration tubing should be attached at the Y site above the 1.2 micron filter. Any medication that should not be filtered should not be co-administered. 
Always check the medication compatibility with a parental nutrition solution, including additives, and remember to flush before and after each medication administration. Occlusions are common issues while administering parental nutrition. There should be a systematic process to troubleshoot these issues. I recommend to start from the pump to the patient. At the pump, verify the appropriate pressure setting is programmed on the infusion pump. Retrace the tubing from the pump to the patient to ensure that there are no kinks. While retracing, Ensure all administration tubing clamps are open. At the vascular access site, inspect the dressing to ensure the catheter is not kinked underneath the dressing and assess the patency of the vascular access. Ensure there are no incompatible medications that were co-administered with the parental nutrition. Verify the size of the filter that is being used. And finally, after reviewing all possible causes of occlusions, remove and replace the filter. And that concludes this presentation. Here's the reference list. This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen, supported by an educational grant from Powell Corporation. Thank you so much for your attention.